Art begins with what we call the Stone Age. Around 30,000 BC, Cro-Magnon Man appears, true Homo sapiens. With them, we begin to see material culture with communicative purpose, art. Paleo, Meso, and Neolithic are relative terms. The dates actually vary over space. Some cultures are moving on to the next step in developing settlements and urbanizations, while others are still hunting and gathering. Very early on, we see practical items such as stone axes and spearheads. We also find early examples of found objects, things like pebbles, which are smeared with ochre, a kind of colored clay, in which naturally occurring images were recognized. Pebbles which looked like faces were very popular found items. The earliest art, or representation, occurs around 30,000 BCE. Representation is the interpretation and communication of ideas through images. We use symbols and images to present ideas again, represent. Paleolithic art is often described as primitive, a problematic term in modern usage. Primitive originally simply meant early. Today, primitive implies a lack of skill, and that if they only knew how, they could have made these images look differently. But keep this in mind. This is how they wanted these images to look. Paleolithic art is actually highly sophisticated with a very refined use of line and form to represent a wide variety of creatures and ideas. In fact, art historians marvel at how art appears very suddenly with no apparent preliminaries. It leaps into being in highly skilled and high quality images, not sketches or other early steps in learning how to create images. Any artists must ask themselves three questions when creating an object. And here we will be considering these three questions and how the artist answered them. This will provide us insight into the cultures and societies of the artists and objects we study. First, what is art? The whole idea of art and its purpose shifts through time. Our idea of artists as great creative geniuses producing works of personal expression is actually very modern, a legacy of the Renaissance artists such as Michelangelo. What is art is a central question to artists because it determines so much in the whole process of creation. Second, what will I represent? The answer to this is the subject. Artists don't portray everything, there isn't time. They must choose what to represent, and the reasons for that choice are often rooted in culture and experience. Third, how will I represent it? This is actually a two-part question. The first part is determining what materials will be used. Will this be a painting, a sculpture, a building? What kinds of paints or materials shall I use? Do I use limestone, as in the woman of Willendorf, or mix saliva with charcoal, as we see at Chauvet? The second part of our answer is style. Style is a purposeful act. We make things natural or abstract because that kind of representation relays meaning, not from lack of skill or technology or knowledge. We make conscious choices to use smooth or rough lines, curves or patterns, controlled strokes or frenzied spattering. Style is often influenced by culture and society and the prevailing tastes of those paying for or otherwise controlling art production. One of the more well-known forms of Paleolithic art is cave painting, and perhaps the most famous examples are the paintings of Lascaux. Paleolithic paintings are usually deep in caves, away from the cave mouths. The openings of caves were used for dwelling, enhanced by structures of perishable materials such as wood, bone, and leather. These areas would have been more exposed to the elements, so we do not know if there were paintings in these habitable areas. However, we do know that paintings survive in areas that would have been difficult to reach during the Paleolithic period and are almost impossible to reach today. Lascaux was discovered by boys chasing a dog. They were originally thought to be fake. The images were so crisp and clear. However, calcite covered some of the images, deposits that would have taken thousands of years to accumulate. These deposits prove the authenticity of these paintings, and other sites such as Altamira and Chauvet. There are two distinct styles of Paleolithic painting, the silhouette and the outline. Both styles often exploit the natural texture of the walls and ceiling of the cave to enhance the naturalism of the images. Silhouette images are made with red and yellow ochre or charcoal, which is chewed and then blown onto the walls. The outline style is usually finger or brush painted with charcoal mixed with saliva. The saliva makes the paint stickier. Some images are drawn on with chunks of pigment instead of using a brush. 
we also find engravings carved into some of the caves. Paleolithic artists were interested in making their subjects clearly and easily recognizable by showing the most recognizable angles of their subjects. This is called maximum visibility. Most Paleolithic painting, with a notable exception of early sites such as Chauvet, use twisted perspective for maximum visibility. This is when the form is broken into parts, with each part being shown by its most recognizable angle. If you think of Egyptian painting, the stiff walk effect is created by showing the face in profile, the torso frontally, and then the legs in profile, all the most recognizable angles for the part. This is twisted perspective. In Paleolithic painting, animals are often shown in profile, but the horns are frontal, which is why you see both horns, and all the legs are shown. There is a basic use of foreshortening in Paleolithic depiction of animals. The animals seemed more three-dimensional because the back feet are often smaller in some cases. Which style is older? Look close. The outline style, which appears to be the simpler of the two styles, actually overlaps the earlier silhouette animals. Remember, these caves are painted over two or three thousand years, often in very unfavorable conditions. Animal fat lamps are smoky and smelly, the air is often stale, and the area is difficult to reach. Later artists may not have even noticed that earlier images existed. The sense of movement in Lascaux's Hall of Bulls was most likely accidental, created by overlapping of images over centuries. There is no common ground, no indication of place or space in these paintings. In an area of Lascaux called The Well, we see this very interesting image. This painting is much studied because of the rare occurrence of human figures, particularly male figures. This one is enigmatic. We are fairly sure that it is a male figure because he appears to be ithophallic, thus emphasizing male anatomy. But with all Paleolithic art, we can't be sure. He appears to have a bird head, and there is certainly a bird, perhaps a standard, drawn near the figure. Is he dead? or wounded, or dreaming, or perhaps even having a vision? Has he just disemboweled a bison with a spear? What does the rhino have to do with the man and the bison? Is it a completely separate drawing? Unfortunately, with Paleolithic art, it's very hard to answer these questions. Chauvet's discovery in 1994 challenged much of what was traditionally considered Paleolithic standard style. There's no twisted perspective. There is a preponderance of incomplete forms which are rare elsewhere. There are clear narrative paintings, including motifs of animals fighting. And there's apparently intentional overlapping of forms, rather than the separate images seen in caves such as Lascaux. There is an unfortunate assumption that art naturally progresses from abstraction to naturalism, and that naturalism is the preferred style for art. This is untrue, and Chauvet really emphasizes that. Paleolithic art evolved from highly naturalistic forms to more calligraphic ones, from the silhouette style to the outline style. The silhouette style comes first. Art actually swings on a pendulum between abstraction and naturalism, depending on the swing of human thought and interest. Cultures which are more interested in supernatural abstract ideas and emotion tend to create more abstract styles. Cultures more interested in the mundane and material world, in human experience, tend to create more naturalistic representations. And why are these images painted here at all? Most of the animals were not food animals, as in they weren't eaten. Could they be totem or spirit images? Could they serve some religious purpose, drawing generations of humans to these locations to paint similar images in similar areas over the centuries? Could they be connected with the hunt, or even decoration? We just cannot say with certainty. With prehistoric art, we are forced to do what every good art historian should do with any object. We are forced to rely on the clues given to us by the objects themselves. Like Sherlock Holmes or Hercule Poirot, we must use our little gray cells to formulate theories, then scrutinize the details to see if they work. And with prehistoric art, a single theory is unlikely to cover every example. After all, these caves were created over thousands of years. Lascaux took two to three thousand years to create. Who is to say that the artists of 15,000 BC were creating art for the same reasons as artists of 12,000 BCE? That would be like saying we make art for the same reasons that, say, the Romans did. In some ways, yes, we do. But in other ways, important ways, our cultures are vastly different, our values and ideas far different. Our reasons for art and our answer to what is art is not the same as 2,000 years ago. Why should Paleolithic culture be any different? 
with such a wide gap.